Hello and thanks for joining me. I'm in the workshop today and to be honest this is not really where I wanted to be today uh, and I'll explain why. Uh, firstly I was going to go to a bike show today to show my uh, Norton Commando but it is absolutely hammering down with rain outside and the forecast is for it to be raining all day which is not really the weather for standing around at bike shows. Um, but you can probably hear the rain hammering on the roof, it's raining so hard and it's like the, the road outside is like a river. But the, the reason I'm in the workshop is because my little beater died and I'm trying to fix it and, and get it up and running to go on a ride tomorrow because the forecast is, is for the weather to be better tomorrow. Now I'm actually halfway through fixing the beater and I just suddenly thought, hey it might be worth making a video about this for those of you who maybe have got less experience with electrical problems and issues, um, you know, I'm not making myself out to be any kind of electrician um, or e expert in these things. Far from it, I have to tell you. Uh, it's, pure, it's purely because you know, I've struggled in the past with these and still struggle with some electrical uh, problems and it can be very disheartening. I thought it might be worth just making this quick video to show you um, how to diagnose and fix what sometimes can be relatively straightforward electrical problems. So I'll take you over to the bike and I'll try and explain what I'm doing and I'll backtrack a little bit on, on what I've actually already done. Okay, so I'm just holding my uh, camera in my hand so hopefully it's not too wobbly but I want to show you what the issue is and get down here. Things are a bit tight in the workshop today because it's raining outside I don't really want to put my bikes out so I've got all the bikes um, packed in here but uh, this is my little beta rev 3 trails bike and i was out riding it uh, about two weeks ago and it just suddenly died on me and it just wouldn't start again kicking it and kicking it wouldn't start so the first thing you need to do is, is diagnose what the you know the, the the problem is and what i want to to do is is to try and take you through a systematic approach towards identifying uh, and solving the problem. Now you can probably see I've already got the bike uh, sort of dismantled because I'm already well on my way to fixing it and in fact I'm just about to put it back together and fingers crossed it will run. But I just want to talk you through uh, the steps. So the first thing is if, you, if the bike's not running generally you can say it's an issue of either it's not getting petrol through into the engine or it's um, getting petrol but it's not getting a spark. So the two, those are the two things that you need to look for. So with petrol, let, let me just show you. I'll take you around the other side of the bike and, and I just want to show you something. Okay, hopefully you can see here uh, that on my bike I've got a little inline petrol filter on the line that runs down from the petrol tank to the carburetor. So for me it's fairly easy to see where the petrol is getting through to the carburetor because I can see petrol in this little online filter there. So the other thing that, that you really want to do then is to kick the bike over a few times and remove the spark plug and have a look at and sniff the spark plug. And it should be obvious to you if petrol's getting through but it's not uh, igniting because the spark plug will be wet and you can sniff it and you can smell the, the petrol on it. So um, I did that when it broke down, so it was obvious that petrol was getting through. So um, not, not necessarily in the right mixture, I mean, but at least you know petrol's getting through. Uh, and so my next uh, step was to uh, check for a spark. The best way to test for a spark is to remove the spark plug, then reinsert it into the lead and the cap there, and then rest the electrode against the, which is basically the outer part of the, any part with the thread. Um, onto the side of the engine and then kick the bike over and you maybe need assistance of somebody so one person to kind of hold the spark plug whilst you kick it over unless you can just rest it somewhere where it'll stay uh, and see if you're getting a spark so I did that here and I wasn't getting a spark so the next thing I did then was simply just change the spark plug for a brand new spark plug uh, just to make sure it wasn't the spark plug that was faulty so I tried it with a, a new spark plug that still didn't get me a, a spark so I then start working my way back up the system uh, just to systematically check all of the electrical components. So the first and most obvious thing to check for me is the engine kill switch and that's actually something which a lot of people 
overlook and neglect. Now on these trails bikes you've got this, this magnetic kill switch and if that's faulty or even just if you've forgotten and left it off um, that's why it's not going to be working. Um, so I need to just test that that switch is working so I follow the wire back from the switch down to where I can access it and, and on, on mine uh, you, you can actually get to it down here because um, well this is quite an old bike and it's been butchered around quite a lot but I can see here that the, the connections um, for this. So what I'm going to do is connect uh, an electric meter to it and what I've got it on is a I've got it on the setting for testing um, resistance to basically see if I've got a, a circuit there or not. And on my electric meter, there's a setting here where you get a little beeping sound if you make a circuit. So if I just demonstrate, um, you might be able to hear, it's very, it's very quiet, but you might be able to hear the beep. When I make the circuit there, you get a beeping. So it's nice just getting a, that audible signal. So what I'm going to do, it doesn't matter which way you get around because you're just testing for a circuit, but I'm just connecting my meter here into the two wires that come out of the uh, switch. And then I'm going to pull it off and see if I get a circuit. Yeah. I don't know if you heard that. But when I disconnected the, the switch there, I was getting the circuit, which means that it's closing the circuit uh, and um, that, that is working properly. But importantly, with that on, it's not closing the circuit and killing the engine. So I know it's not the kill switch. So working my way back up the system now, the next thing I'm going to do is test the coil. Now you can easily test the coil and the stator on the bike, but I've actually already got them off the bike from the work that I was doing. So I can show you on the bench, which is a little bit easier. So I'll take you over to the workbench and I'll show you what I was doing with the uh, coil there. I've brought you over to the workbench. I've just got some uh, white uh, tissue paper on here just so everything shows up clearly. And I'm just about to demonstrate how we can test the coil. But um, before I go any further, I just want to point out that when you are trying to diagnose problems on your bike, uh, it can be very frustrating. And so one of the most important tools is a mug of tea, particularly if you're English. Maybe if you're American, a mug of coffee might do the job for you. But if you're English, when the going gets tough, you put the kettle on, you make yourself a cup of tea, and it puts everything back into the appropriate perspective. So, cup of tea in hand, let's have a look at this coil. There are two ways that you can uh, check your coil. The first, and the easiest, and this is what I did, was simply replace it with a different coil and see if you get a, a spark. So I did that. Um, on the beaters, these are fairly generic and simple uh, coils. So. Um, actually my next door neighbour has a similar bike so we took the coil off his bike and uh, substituted it on mine and we tried it and still no spark but you can actually test it with a meter as well with the resistance now it helps if you uh, can find the correct readings but the uh, across the um, the primary uh, wind the primary circuit which is which is the input so here we've got the input this spake connector and then the earth uh, goes goes um, just on the the mount here where it mounts onto the the frame, so you should get a small reading on there. So I've put my multimeter on just two uh, k resistance, and I say it helps if you know what it should be, um, but you can see that I am getting a very small amount of uh, resistance there. Um, now I I I looked it up on the internet and you know the, the readings that it's saying that we should get on the internet are higher than that uh, actually um, so it's a bit on the low side but we did check it against uh, the other one and they were, they were very similar so that seems okay to me the other reading that you can check then is across from the primary to the to the secondary and you should get a much higher resistance level there around about 10k so if I put it on the put my meter on the 20k uh, setting and then just um, inserting that probe inside my lead cap there and then this one to the you can see I put it onto the spade connector I don't know if you can see what I'm doing but just on the spade connector there and you can see on the meter I don't know if you can read that I'm actually getting move the meter where you can read it better but I think I might be able to angle it up towards the camera for you I can see it from where I am but you probably can't um, so we get the connection across the secondary coil there and you can see that I'm getting 
9.67 so that's just under 10 so that suggests to me that that coil is okay but as I said if you really want to belt and braces on it just uh, substitute the coil I mean new coils like this are well in the UK they're about 10 pounds so um, they're not very expensive so uh, having tested that I concluded that the coil was okay so that then takes me back up the uh, up the, the route of the electric back to the stator to the generation so maybe it just simply wasn't generating the electricity for the spark so the next job is to have a look at the stator again you can do this on the bike but I've already got the stator off the bike so I've already been fixing it so I'll get it on the bench and show you so a bit of tea to keep things going so uh, the stator on the beta has four wire outputs so you've got the red and the brown wires here which are the supplier to the CDI uh, which obviously then create the uh, ignition so the the red is the AC supply and the brown is the return or the ground I should say um, the black wire uh, is the trigger for the timing and the yellow wire that goes to the regulator then to provide the 12 volt supply that feeds the light the horn or anything else that you you've got on the bike now you should be able to test the the windings on this um, uh, and there are a few videos on the internet about how you can test these however um, you really need to know what the correct readings uh, should be to um, to be able to test them for your bike um, so the way you can test it is you can test from the red which is the uh, the the supply the CDI that's the, the you know the the power output from from the stator you can test that to, to the black and you should get a resistance reading uh, across that and you can also test the yellow across to the brown but if you suspect there is a problem with with the stator it's probably best just to get somebody professional to to test it and um, in most cases they can be fixed and rewound so I have just got this one back today I, I had this uh, rewound it was tested it was proven to be faulty so I've had it um, rewound and um, I'm about to fit it back on the bike together with the the coil and everything and hopefully we'll get it back together and we've got a spot this time I've tried to set up the camera here so you can see what I'm doing you can see I've got the stator off here and just with putting it back on um, but it, I'm a bit tight for space down here so if you're in the way I'm afraid you you are going to have to move but I'll try and work around the camera where it is uh, just incidentally you might wonder what's going on down here you can see I bought this bike second hand it's quite old it's a 17 year old uh, well no sorry 16 year old bike and it's obviously seen quite a lot of hard action in the past I don't know anything really about its uh, its history but at some point it's taken a real knock there and it actually knocked a hole in in the bottom of the the casing there so what I've been doing is is filling that and building it up with some metal putty and that's just where I've sanded it down to make sure that um, the uh, the flywheel um, clears it but I've, I've built that up at the bottom so it will seal and you know that may be the reason why I, in fact I strongly suspect it is the reason why the stator failed because I think uh, water and dirt got in here because this was damaged uh, and that's what damaged the coils so anyway I fixed that so hopefully we'll get a nice tight seal there so I'm about to uh, put everything back on here so I'm going to try and show you the reassembly here um, I'm going to put the stator plate back on but first of all um, I've just rotated the, the crank here and you can possibly see you pointed there's a little woodruff key here which I've just reinserted into the slot and that's to um, hold, lo locate the um, the flywheel when it's on you can probably see there there's a little notch there that the woodruff goes into so you need to make sure that that woodruff key is in there before you put the stator plate on now the stator plate I marked uh, it before I took it off so I hopefully get it all lined up with the timing right again so you can see possibly on here uh, against each of the screw holes I just put a little mark uh, that aligns up with the the screw so as I put it back together now just that little grommet thing that you have to thread through with the output wire and um, now hopefully I can get this all lined up correctly 
um, and screw it on. It holds on with three, three screws. three screws in. So I'll just adjust that slightly. Now I've, I've got my marks lined up exactly right now. So that's hopefully exactly where it was when it came off. So I'll tighten those screws down now. Good, right. Okay, this wire connects up at the top, and I'll do that in a second. So now I put the uh, flywheel back on. I've got to um, align the woodruff key with that um, groove. Okay, so then there's a washer and the nut goes on, so pop the washer on there and the nut um, goes on that way around. And I'll torque that down in just a second. So there we are, back together, and then put the cover on, reconnect it, and we'll see if we got a spark. And success! She's running again. Started first kick actually, so hopefully we're good to go and I can ride her tomorrow.